All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show and my summer series, interview series, Frankie's, uh, Frankie's uh, Icons of Pop Culture series. And uh, today I'm talking with uh, a known actor who also has done, I believe, some producing as well as uh, some acting as well. And I think you're also uh, a mind reader also, Mr. Rex Sykes. How's it going? Good, Sean. How are you? Okay, I'm uh, just uh, uh, enjoying the fact that I've, I've moved uh, to Rapid City, South Dakota now, and uh, that's where I make that my official home. You must be gorgeous. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, what's kind of cool about this is how it lives. I actually uh, can see the back of uh, Mount Rushmore. Oh, very, very cool. <laughs> so how did the back of your head look? Did your hair come? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they, they look just as good as uh, as when they were made almost almost 100 years ago. <laughs> that's, that's very cool. I wanted to take my children in the summer. It didn't work out, but I had wanted them to visit Mount Rushmore and perhaps the Grand Canyon and try to do a road trip. But uh, he refused to be in a car with me for any uh, length of time, so we're gonna have to figure out something else. Yeah, yeah, that would be kind of cool if you ever, if you ever did come this way. But I tell you what, you know, I, I've only been here a week, and I'm really surprised how how many people actually have traveled here because this week was the uh, Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Oh, oh yeah, of course, that's a very popular event. <laughs> so, uh, how how have you been there, Rex, and uh, and uh, what's new in your life? Well, uh, I've been very good. I'm going. I'm, I'm. I'm back and forth between L.A. and the Midwest. I raise my children in the Midwest, but I live in Los Angeles and in the Midwest. And I, I, I work both both places. And so, you know, I'm trying to juggle that. It's kind of like having one foot on the on the boat and one foot in the dock. But I, I you know, I wanted to raise my children. Uh, I'd raise my kids in in L.A. if I could. I'm a divorced dad, so it's you know, I, I'm here for my children. Um, oh, sure. But we, I've been making a movie in Wisconsin and uh, directing that, and uh, I've just got some of the footage to our new editor uh, this week, and so uh, we're beginning uh, uh, a loose rough cut on Strum. The movie is also on Facebook. We'll take a look at it. Okay. So that, that I'm I'm turning to Los Angeles in a couple of days to go out and shoot episodes of my Rex Life Movie Beat show, and uh, working on that and some other things that I've got going out there. Okay. So. Uh, so it's it's a busy time, and it's been it's been uh, crazy busy with uh, all sorts of uh, uh, little great stuff, and uh, in the process of uh, trying to uh, raise money for a couple of features and develop the TV show, and uh, you know it, uh, the plate is full. It's very good, and and always always uh, enjoy. Uh, I'd rather tear my hair out than twiddle my thumbs. So that's <laughs> It sounds like you're a busy guy, anyway. That's for sure. I am, and and I have friends in town and who are making a movie. Chris Mulkey is the town, and Sean Ashton and Mimi Rogers comes in the other day, and and they've been here a couple weeks filming a movie, and and so uh, you know Chris and I and, and uh, O'Gill Kitts is directing a guy named Jeff Gendelman who uh, lives here. Well, one of my daughters uh, and sons, karate instructors, actually wrote this movie called The Surface, and so they're shooting it in Milwaukee. It's a, a movie on the lake. And uh, and so I'm I'm there. Uh, and I, I'm I'm going to be gone the final two weeks of their shoot. So it's a little bit of bittersweet trip that I have. <coughs> that my friends are in town, and I'm going away. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Milwaukee, Wisconsin's not too far from where I used to live in northern Minnesota. I've never been there before. I suppose that's pretty beautiful country too. I, I didn't quite hear the end of that. You, oh, uh, did you? I, I, I said uh, uh, that must be a pretty beautiful country, too, over there. You know, it, 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 it actually, the, the Milwaukee is, it's cool. It's a, uh, people here think it's a big city. It's a million and a half, and, it, and they say it's a big city with a small town feel. And I think it's a small town with a small town feel, but, uh, but it's got incredible food. It's got really nice, talented people. It's got the lake, which is great. I, I'm, a, I'm an ocean guy, a water person, so having Lake Michigan is, is wonderful if I can't be at the ocean. Uh, it's flat. It's more like Florida in the southeast of, of, of Wisconsin than, than uh, uh, where there are hills and mountains and valleys and the whole thing where you are. Yeah. And I miss that, and I miss the air and dry climate of the desert. 
but uh, it, has, it has really nice offerings here. Oh, that's cool. And, and, the, and, the, and the crew, uh, the people who've come in from LA, because I always ask them, I'm like, they come in, so people are from, from parts of the country working this movie, and they've got some local people working it. I go, how do you like Milwaukee? And, and, and most of them have been very kind and very generous and very, uh, said uh, many great things about the area. Uh, and I think everybody should make movies in Milwaukee, quite honestly. I think we should have uh, scores of, of Hollywood filmmakers <laughs> come in and shoot in this area um, because of what it offers. Yeah, is Milwaukee known for a few movies over there? I'm sure a few have been filmed over there before. Well, there aren't, I mean, no, there are not a whole lot. We had um, No God, No Master come in and shoot the entire movie. A friend of mine, Harry Green's actor, it starred David Griffith Aaron and Sam that were, and, uh, and Ray Wise and others, and uh, that came in, and they were here about, three months. Public Enemies with Johnny Depp, the Michael Mann movie shot here for, I think, about six weeks, and Transformers 3 had been in for two, four days. I mean, uh, prior to uh, 2009, there were no incentives in the state, and there currently are no incentives, so um, we're lucky to have a few movies, or, 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 a movie or two being made here from outside. Um, would that the incentives? But uh, we desperately need them. We need to, to do something to attract filmmakers from elsewhere to come to um, and shoot. And uh-huh. uh, prior to that, people come in for a day or two. You know, they, I think um, you know Keanu Reeves has been in the medicine area for a couple of days, and they shot some of Wayne's work here. You know, so you know. For oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. But uh, but uh, since 2008, there have been uh, more larger productions. Sadly, when we lost the incentives, oh, everything went away. Um, uh-huh. They did, and, and and the service really represents one of the first movies to come in, and, and this really thanks to Jeff Gendelman, who uh, is a Milwaukee native and the movie here. He wrote the script 18 years ago, and uh, he finally got it made, got it financed, and got an excellent cast. Looks like Sean Astin, Chris Mulkey, Meany Rogers, oh, Gil Cates Jr. Yeah. Is, is directing. Uh, Gil Priest movie. One of the producers on the movie Jobs, which is coming, Ashton Kutcher. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a dedication to Steve Jobs. His his yep. bio kind of thing. Oh yeah, you know, and I saw the trailer for that too, and I like, like definitely pretty good anyway. Yep, yep. And so, and we're making serum here, and uh, we and uh, I've made other you know local homegrown movies here. I, I produced and starred in a movie called The Spade County Massacre. <laughs> uh, came on as producer to help them finish the movie. Uh, the director Dean Chapman. Uh, it's a very gruesome horrific, and um, I was that, and uh, you know some others that, that we've made around here. So, oh, that's uh, they're happening. Not not as much as I like, <laughs> but uh, they are certainly happening. Oh, and, sure. Uh, and, there's, and there's good people. Good people are coming in from elsewhere, so I'm happy. But uh, but more people need to know about us. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And so uh, let's uh, let the, the people get to know you a little bit better. And uh, and uh, how did you uh, get started uh, with acting? I was about three years old, and my parents were in uh, acrobatics and dancing, in just an amateur kind of thing, but then where I, I grew up uh, doing ballet and tap and jazz and did the Nutcracker Suite when I was four or five, uh, not a big part or, you know, things like that, and, and uh, by the time I was four, I knew I wanted to be an actor, I think less was around that time, and, uh, and then continued to do it. By the time I was eight or nine, I had a fascination with the mind-reading thing. I worked with a cousin of Iran and developed to try and develop intuition and then develop that into a show that I could take, uh, you know, around and perform. And I did magic, you know, for Cub Scouts and for senior citizens. Sure. I mean, you know, I've always been, put it this way, since I was very tiny, I've been in front of the public, either on a stage or on television or in a movie or something along those lines. Huh. And uh, I joined the Screen Actors Guild when I was, I think, 18 years old, 19 years old, something like that. So I turned professional actor. Um, I had, before that, I'd done a bunch of non-union movies. And then... Um, and I've uh, been doing that ever since. And uh, I've uh, also worked behind camera producing and acting. And, oh, wow. But I guess acting was my first love up until a number of years ago. And then I then I moved behind the camera. When I was younger, let me put it this way, um, I didn't want behind the camera, but I did. I wrote a movie and we were, you know, went to produce it and started to do things for other people. And you know, I did it because I wanted to act. I wanted it as I did what I had to do as a vehicle to be on screen. Uh, 
but a number of years ago, I went behind the camera just because I, I wanted to be a camera. And uh, I love it. I love it, whether it's directing or producing, whether I'm labels, whether I'm moving a plant, whether I'm coaching. Because I coach actors and speakers. I do presentation things. I, I've taught acting in my life, and I still do. And I, I teach personal and professional development. So, so whether uh, when I'm behind the scenes working with actors or crew, I absolutely love it, especially if I have a professor that knows what they're doing. Oh, or yeah. knows what they're doing. That's a, 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 something incredible. Because movie making is fraught with difficulties and putting out fires and money and time is kicking away and you're losing light or you're losing the location. So if you get to work with people who are committed and, and dedicated and, and they know what they're doing, kind of like the phrase, you know, a place for everything and everything in its place. The people know the protocol and they know set edit and they know how to do their job. Uh, cast and crew then no matter how tough a film is, it is a, is a joyful experience because making movies can be very, very tough and very, very oh, exhausting. Sure. Yeah, and uh, I suppose, uh, do you do you think people realize how, how much work actually goes into making a movie? You know, they don't. They don't. And you know what else? They don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the saddest. They don't care. If you spend six days trying to get something that's, 40 seconds on screen, they don't give a crap. All they care is at the end of the day, did they, did they get their $10 worth, you know, when they sat and watched it or their $1.99, you know, when they watched yeah. Who they entertained? So they don't, you know, they've got all the DVDs and the bang and the making of stuff and everything. More people are yeah. more, I think, informed or intelligent about what goes on in movie making than maybe ever before in the history of movie making because they can access it now. Oh, sure. You know, we would in the interview but the bottom line is they still don't care oh yeah go, oh you know how they did that scene in Spider-Man but they don't but, but not entertained it doesn't matter how much sweat and blood and tears put into it oh, if, if they don't feel they get something from it so so the first obligation I think as a filmmaker and actor is you can with the notion that you're going to be entertaining for the people I know a lot of filmmakers go I don't care if people like it or not and I, I don't think that right. it's kind of like a pair of shoes and I'm a manufacturer. I go. I don't care if people like my shoes. I don't care if they buy them or not. Yeah. And why am I? Why am I taking them to market and putting them out there? Sure, sure. You know, I want people to like what I do. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to placate them. I'm going to just yeah. out out. I'm going to do a formula thing. It means try and be as good and as entertaining and tell the best story you can with the best acting you can, the best production value you can, and make it work for the people who are coming to see you. And that's how you build a little. Oh, exactly, and you know, and I've always been a, one of those type of guys who, who, you know, who really actually cares about you know the the whole film, especially if it's like a movie that I really like. Uh, I care about the opening credits, the ending credits, uh, and everything in because I, I I believe that's uh, that's where the real movie magic happens. I believe anyway, and I you know there is a lot of people that do uh, that work you know on making films and stuff and and uh, you know and that's why we have ending credits and stuff because most people will just go to a theater and when the movie's over or whatever and uh, they have the end credits they'll just leave but I I, I I tend to stay around until the end because sometimes uh, if you you know you might miss out on a bonus clip or whatever that they might have at the end of the film well that is true I mean and some people do that you know where they you know, it's Ferris Bueller's day off or something where, you know, go away. Are you still here? Go away. You know, at the end of the credits kind of thing. Go, <laughs> yeah. go home. Um, you know, yeah, so some some people do that. But I, I think I think the idea that, you know, a movie could have 10 people working on it, but if it's a commercial venture, it's more likely got hundreds, maybe thousands of people who work on it, especially if it's a big, big movie. They have, you know, thousands of people between animators and post-production people, everything else. So... The credits are there so that people who work can be acknowledged. And I, what I hate more than anything else is when you're watching TV and compress the credits or they cut the credits off. Yeah. You know, and they and they because this is this is for those people who you know there's a lot of people who work behind the thing and maybe all they did was push a broom on the set. But you know what? They got hired to do that, and that's their job. And the, and for them to be able to see their name and go, hey, I worked on this movie and hung out with these people. And then, and then, because television is fast, the medium is fast, and yeah. then crap, people don't pay attention to the credits. Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. It's too bad. It's it's it's, you know. Yeah, but I, I guess they look at it like the index of a book. You know, you don't really look at the index of a book unless you're <laughs> trying to find something. So unless you're trying to find a friend, sure. You know, or who is that part? They don't stick around. But it's different in L.A., and it's different in cities where the industry is there. People will sit, and, I mean, not everybody, obviously, but people sit because they want to see their name or their friends' names. 
I saw the the um, the silent movie, The Artist, in in Milwaukee. I took my daughter, and um, we sat through the credits. And it wasn't a packed theater by any means. I I literally I cried. I I I, I was so impressed that people and people applaud. And this was before it got the Academy Award. Uh, but I was so impressed that people hung out, watched the movie, one applauded it, and enjoyed the fact that it was a silent movie, you know, and it was an homage to that day, and yeah. it wasn't even an American film. And, and then they sat literally through the credits, and, I, and I, it just it made me weep. I was like, I can't believe that 2013, there are these people here in, in the Milwaukee area who are, who are, are, are willing to sit through this and watch it and enjoy it. And I mean, I loved it. Oh, I yeah. found out something really interesting about Milwaukee. I had no idea. I went and saw Elysium the other night with a a, little, a friend of mine. And we went to like a nine o'clock or nine thirty showing at, at one of the local theaters, and there's a new Bollywood movie playing. And oh. I said, How's Elysium doing? He goes, Well, it's their second most popular film. And I go, What's the first? They go, Oh, the movie. Oh, the Shania, the Shania Express. You know. Yeah. So really, they go, Oh God, every week they go Bollywood. We play Bollywood movies here. It's huge. And I'm like, No. They go, Yeah. <laughs> So there's a huge number of people who are going to see movies made from India, from Hollywood, here in Milwaukee. And I was like, I, I find that very hard to believe. But, uh, but indeed, because uh, all of these people were coming, Indians were coming in, the saris and Indian yep. garb and dressed and everything. But not just the Indians are watching the Bollywood movies. They've become very, very popular, apparently. So, uh, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. In Milwaukee. Yeah, no kidding. So, what what is like? What, what would you say would be your favorite genre of film? All, you know, all all together. It's a very hard question for me because it's changed in my life. You know, and people the other day on the on the surface, I, the, I said, uh, he said, uh, well, "What's your favorite? Who's your favorite director?" And I, I literally stopped because I'm like, "Going, geez, you know, I don't even know the names of my favorite directors anymore." <laughs> you know, I mean, I I can go back to the. The, the classic ones like Wells or Wilder, you know, George Stevens, you know, you know, things like that. But I, I really was hard pressed. Um, and, and genre is difficult. You know, at, through different times of my life, I suppose, I suppose, um, noir, film noir is my favorite, whether it's modern day or a crime drama. Uh, what I tend to read are, are uh, it's a book by, a series by John Sanford called The Pike Series. It's uh, Lucas Davenport. He's a, he starts off as a cop. Now he, he ends up, you know, in administration. And yeah. um, there's he, Sanford has another one called uh, the Flowers, Buck, uh, Virgil Flowers series. And I read Michael Conley. I, I tend to read, you know, like murder mysteries and stuff. Or, you know, I like, you know, the the Maltese Falcon kind of movies. I just watched Savages this morning, actually. I had never seen Savages, so uh, I was up, I get up every day at 4 o'clock, and, but I, I had some business work to do, so I, I got it done, and I put on Savages, and I watched Savages, you know, and so crime, drama, mystery, huh. stuff like that, I suppose is my favorite. Oh, sure, sure. And, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Uh, now you you've done film for for a long time. Uh, I noticed that you uh, that you were friends with uh, Adam Rifkin. Do you know him personally, or are you just a Facebook yeah. friend? Yeah, you know, Adam is a wonderful guy. He's a great director. Uh, on top of being uh, you know a great director, he's he's uh, a wonderful guy. Let me say that he's a brilliant mind. I love his stuff, and I and I I had breakfast with him recently and went to the premiere of. Uh, uh, the reality show. Okay. Uh, it was uh, it was originally a series, and he cut it for a feature. So we went to the premiere the evening that it premiered in L.A. And uh, it's great. It's great as a feature. If you have a chance to see it, he he has such a twisted mind. He is such a demented person, and Rifkin. That, oh yeah. Uh, you know, it comes out in his work. He look this series, which was all about. You know, uh, the number of times we're caught on surveillance cameras, whether it's ATMs or banks or, you know, uh, stoplights, you know, stuff or in supermarkets. And he did a whole series based on the movie, look, uh, based on that. And then the reality show is what would happen if somebody, you know, uh, orchestrated a reality show uh, and uh, people didn't know that they were on it. Oh, sure. And, sure. and uh, you know, and of course he's done other things. He's worked with, you know, uh, Brad Wyman, who's another... Another great guy. So, uh, both those guys are terrific. 
Yeah, he seems like he's had a successful career, and I, I got to interview him way back uh, early in about January or February, and uh, I remember that's kind of how I found you, uh, uh, because uh, I, I, I had like a little little countdown, I guess, of some of my favorite uh, guests that I've had on the show, and, and at that time I, I interviewed about 60 people within a year's time, and uh, yeah, yeah and, and, and I picked Adam as the number one favorite, just because he was kind of the reason why I kind of stuck with it. Uh, when it wow. came to doing radio interviews and stuff. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Keep, it, keep going. It's awesome. That's awesome what you do. <laughs> it's great to be on your show. And, I'm, and if, if, I, if I get to keep company to Adam and your other guests, then I'm, I'm so honored, and, I'm, and it's, it's a really cool... It's a privilege to be here. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, so thank yeah, hey, hey, no problem. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, for just uh, coming on the show. I know you were really busy and stuff, so we had to, you know, we had to figure out a good time schedule, but it worked out good. No, yeah, it's great. I apologize that it's changed and, and things like that. So, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we're doing it, and it's and it's fun, you know. Um, there's so many, you know, the, the the problem with movies today is there's so many big blockbusters, these quarter billion dollar movies, but people need to be aware that there are a lot of small movies out there that never see the live day in movie theaters. Yeah. They, they make, you know, DVDs or Blu-ray kind of, are kind of going away, you know, it's streaming, it's different stuff. But uh, to be able to support the smaller filmmakers, it's so hard to raise money to make a $5 million movie now, uh, you know, and... Or a ten million dollar movie. No, sure. If it's not, if it's two hundred million, they can do it. But I can't. <laughs> so there's all these filmmakers out there trying to trying to make movies, and and some are less than that. You know, they're hundred thousand dollar movies. It's, it's amazing. But uh, everybody keep doing it, and 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 and. Oh, by the way, there. Um, no, I was gonna, I was going to say something about massacre at Central High. Should you ask me something about that privately? I think I asked you about the uh, Girls Gone Dead movie. I think. Girls, yeah, okay. And what I was asking about was like, uh, wasn't that like an independent film that just kind of blew up a little bit? Kind of. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, what uh, uh, Michael Hahn and his wife uh, Megan, friends, uh, wrote and and called me up one day and said, you know, would you like to uh, produce and maybe first AD this movie for us? You know, and I said, sure. Well, we think we're going to get it going. Uh, we'll let you know like Thursday if it's going or not. And then they called me back and said, "Yeah, it's going." One time I got involved and came on. I came on as a as a co producer and as a line producer of the movie. Um, some things had changed, and and, and uh, Michael took on a, a co director, Aaron Wells, and uh, and uh, then we began pre pre production. And so I, I about three months. Uh, it was about a two month shoot. I mean, it's in Florida, and then another month. Um, uh, remote pre-production with uh, with the uh, producer and director, oh, okay. and uh, shot it in Florida, and uh, a, a great bunch of people in it. You know, some cast of, of of up and coming actors, men and women, and then it had Ron Jeremy, you know, oh, the sure. porn guy. It had Jerry Lawler, the wrestler. It had Nico McBrain, the drummer from Iron Maiden, who was just an incredible guy. I, I love Nico, and. Um, uh, I think it's best is spelled, yeah. and uh, Linnea Quigley. I mean, it had, you know, we, it was filled with all these people. And music from Bon Jovi Entertainment, because uh, they 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 put in um, Bon Jovi. Of course, is a family name for John Bon Jovi, but they're, it's yeah. not connected to John. It's it's Bon Jovi Entertainment. So they put music in it. So this this little movie has has it went to become the number one horror film uh, in the world for a while, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, it's still holding its own and still doing uh, apparently quite well. So uh, that's very cool. So uh, and, uh, and people are still getting it, and they should get it. And they should get the Spade County Massacre. The huh. director is selling a director's cut before he sells the uh, the other cut. And I, I think huh. they'd have to go look up Spade County Massacre, um, dot, the movie dot com or Spade County Massacre. I don't know what the website is. <laughs> but like I said, it's gruesome. It's a low-budget horror movie, and if they like horror... Um, it's a disgusting horror movie, I should say, because <laughs> it is gruesome. Oh yeah, and, and some people, I, I know a lot of people like uh, gruesome horror. Even I, you know, when I was a little kid, I didn't really get into horror because I thought everything you saw on TV was real. You know, at that time, you oh, know, yeah. when I was a little kid. But now that I know how movies are made and stuff like that, you know, it's been a it's been a long time since I know how movies were made. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can watch just about anything and not get too well, not to get too grossed out. I don't think, but. 
Who knows? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's funny because I'm I'm attempting now to to produce uh, another horror flick, which is actually again quite it's a throwback to a grindhouse kind of seventies horror, like the R-rated horror films. It's got a sense of humor, but it's it's definitely uh, got an edge to it in terms of you know the script. It's, and then I'm trying to do kind of a schlock matchup, you know, uh, horror sci-fi kind of uh, movie that we're working on. Right? And when I say try, we're in the process of developing these and in, in different stages of development with raising money and pre-production. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm producing a documentary that has to do with an unsolved mystery that happened, you know, a hundred years ago, kind of thing. And and uh, and and now we've come up with another uh, like pilot for a television show that has to do with like weird murders and deaths and stuff <laughs> and, and whatever kind of like horrific kind of yeah uh, oh yeah you know it's weird that we talk about this because I don't think of my, I've also produced you know a sitcom pilot and cooking shows and things so sure. you know I try, <laughs> it's not that I it's not when you and it goes back to, to what's my favorite genre it's not it's not hard but horror is one of those things that is horror sci-fi you know it's kind of it's kind of easy to do oh sure and, and you to get made necessarily, but yeah. it's kind of easy to do. And you also did like way back in your early days, uh, before uh, before you started doing producing stuff. You were also like an actor, as far as like you did some TV shows, didn't you? Some sitcoms. Sure. Well, I, and I'm still an actor, and I still act. I mean, I, you know, uh, uh, movies that have kind of been, I mean, in the movie, the movie Horrid, I, I play a couple stars, Doctor Rogers. So that, that's available on DVD. It's a, again, it's a low budget horror flick. Uh, I'm in a movie called Broken Orbit, where I play uh, the leader of a think tank. Uh, I think I just did a short by uh, a young director named Chris Edmonds, a very good guy, who was helping produce another movie called Serial Daters Anonymous uh, at one time. And uh, we, he was in his, he did a short, um, and, I, and I play a therapist in a, in the thing called Prone. Oh. And um, so. Uh, Forget I forget all the different things that I've done lately, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know I try and keep busy. Oh and, yeah, uh, and uh, I was supposed to. So I think I'm supposed to act, do a, a role when I go to L.A. in the next. I'm not sure what's going on with that yet, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, I've done some television and uh, <clears throat> movies, and one that people always ask about is, um, and I mentioned it was Massacre at Central High because that's become. A, you know, a, a really big cult flick, and uh, it's hard to get today. But uh, the people who are fans have been fans, you know, friends with it, and their new fans are always coming out. Oh sure, go find out about it. Oh cool. Well, I tell you what, Rex, uh, I appreciate uh, having you on the show. And uh, uh, you got any last thing to say to your fans out there? Well, I do. I mean, anybody who's a fan, um, fantastic. People can find me on Facebook. My profile, you know, the friends thing is always a problem because they have many friends. But I have Rex Sykes Movie Beat on Facebook. It's Rex Sykes Movie Beat Friends. It's a friends page. They can they can find me there, and they can find out about my, my show, which is Rex Sykes Movie Beat, which is also an interview show. And uh, they can listen, you know, when we record live, or they can listen to it any time, twenty four seven. And that's at my website, rexsykes.com, r e x s i k e s dot com. So forgive the shameless plug, but but people can find me on Facebook, they can follow me on Twitter, and they can uh, they can listen to the shows. And it has been a great pleasure being on your show. Oh, I, thank I you. really appreciate that. I'm, like I said, I'm keeping them company, and that makes me very very happy, and I feel very privileged and honored. Hey, happy that I can get make this work. You know, I'm just a young guy who who uh, nobody's really ever heard of. You know, I'm just trying to get my name out there. So, you know, I used to be a DJ back in the day, and now I just do this podcast thing for free. I don't get paid for it. Is this something that I've done because it's it's uh, just a love of the work? Uh, but I moved to South Dakota. Just uh, to, that's where I'll, I'll get my paying job. For right now, this is just something that I enjoy doing, and and maybe who knows if I can get a sponsor or somebody later on. Um, to try to make it bigger than than it is right now, but for now I'm just happy to to do what I do and have you on. <laughs> well, uh, you know it's a great thing, and keep at it because you never know what or where it might lead. And the people who become fans and your followers and your friends because of the show, and because you know you're connecting them up, they get to listen to people that they know or like or learn of for the very first time. I mean, you're offering a service. You're providing them something, you know, really really cool. So stay with it, and 
it was the old saying, if you do what you love, then you never work a day in your life. And, and the other saying is, if you do what you love, then the money will follow. Yeah. So stick, stick with your passion, man. That's very cool. All right. And enjoy South Dakota. One of these days I'm going to get there. Uh, hopefully I'll get there with my kids so that they can see the, the beauty of South Dakota. Well, it, if you ever do get down here, uh, uh, let me know. And then we'll, we'll get together. <laughs> All I right. I will. I'll give you, I'll give you a call. All right. Uh, well, that sounds great, and uh, once again, this was Rex Sykes, and uh, well, thank you again for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Have a great rest of the day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good day and make your dreams come true. All right. Have a good one, Rex. Thank you. All right. And that was uh, Mr. Rex Sykes, the uh, actor and producer as well. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, this uh my first actual interview since uh, moving to Rapid City, South Dakota, where my it's my new home now, and uh, it's uh, I hope you guys also enjoy some of the vlogs that I I put up. I posted just recently, uh, not too long ago, uh, a tour of Rapid City, um, a Sturgis uh, tour of the uh, an, an hour long video uh, tour of Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, and then also we went to a place called Keystone, South Dakota. Which is only like maybe 10 miles from here. And I, I literally live within 20 miles of Mount Rushmore. How cool is that, huh? How many people can say that? I mean, I never used to be able to say that, but now I can say that. I can go to Mount Rushmore every day if I want to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thanks, uh, Rex, uh, for uh, uh, being on the show. And thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, we've got some big guests coming up really, really soon. I'm not going to say who yet, but uh, we'll keep it a surprise. Uh, because I'm just as surprised as everybody else. So anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, we'll see you again for another great Frankie Slauson show and uh, another great edition of the Frankie's Summer Interview Series, Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture. Bye-bye.